What's going on guys, my name is Matt and recently I did quite a number of upgrades to my personal gaming and editing PC and I even did a little bit of modding too so I'm really excited to share this video with you guys. Now before I get any further I want to give a big shout out and thanks to Samsung for sponsoring this video. They sent out their blazing fast 960 Pro NVMe SSD for me to feature in this build. It's an amazing drive in the extremely compact M.2 form factor and I'll be telling you guys more about it later in the video. So before I I go over any of the parts, let's go ahead and talk about this PC's purpose and what I need it to do. Being that I'm a student, a gamer, and edit videos, I need my PC to be a jack of all trades, and because I take it a lot of places, having it be compact is a must for me. For these reasons, I decided I wanted to base my system around the Johnsbo C2 computer case. This case looks amazing and is super compact at only 12 liters. For reference, here it is next to the Micro ATX Corsair 350D. The only problems I found when I first built in it were the lack of drive support and the fact there was little to no exhaust meaning components inside ran uncomfortably warm. So what I decided to do was mod the case by using another case's fan grill as a template to drill out a mount for an exhaust fan. 100 holes drilled later and my system now has a top exhaust and runs much cooler and quieter. Also having an M.2 SSD makes up for the lack of drive mounting options. For my CPU I went with the Ryzen 7 1700 overclocked to 3.7 GHz. This is an 8 core 16 thread part from AMD that's overclockable meaning it's great for gaming, editing, and most anything else you can throw at it. To cool the CPU I used one of the old style Wraith coolers. I use this as it's the best low profile CPU cooler I had on hand that worked with the AM4 platform. For my build the 1700 is seated inside of the ASRock AB350 ITX slash AC motherboard. It features built in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and a much better header layout than other ITX. ITX AM4 boards. The good layout, ample fan headers, and decent overclockability made me decide to use this as my main motherboard for the foreseeable future. For RAM, I'm using Galax Hall of Fame DDR4 RAM, which is a 16GB kit at 3200MHz. This RAM uses Samsung B-Die and I haven't had any trouble running it at the full 3200MHz, which is important as Ryzen CPUs benefit immensely from fast RAM. For internal storage, I'm using a 512GB Samsung 960 Pro NVMe SSD. This drive is in the M.2 form factor and installs really easily in the back of the motherboard. In terms of features and speed, the 960 Pro offers sequential read and write speeds of up to 3.5 and 2.1 gigabytes per second respectively. Testing out the drive, I found these speeds to be as fast as advertised on my drive. Also, with a 5 year warranty and industry leading reliability, the 960 Pro is a great addition to any professional's workflow. For me, this drive is going to be great when I make the jump to 4K videos as editing off of an NVMe SSD can greatly benefit high res editing workflows. With all this being said, one of my favorite features is its small size. Not only is it considerably smaller than a traditional 2.5 inch SSD, but it also cuts down on the need for a SATA data and power cable, which in a small form factor build like mine is great as there will be more room for airflow. Overall, in combination with storage that I have externally, the 960 Pro is an addition of my computer I'm very happy about. Moving on to the graphics card, I actually recently picked up a GTX 1070 Ti Mini from Zotac. Being that the price I paid for it was $100 less than a GTX 1080 Mini and only $20 more than the GTX 1070 Mini, I think this card is an amazing value. Though I haven't applied a big overclock yet, I will be in the future as 1070 Ti's need to be overclocked to get the most performance out of them. Being that I game at a high resolution but don't usually play very demanding games, I think the 1070 Ti should work amazing for my purposes, especially when you consider that I've been using an RX 460 as a placeholder for the past month or so. Powering the system is the Corsair SF450, which is a fully modular, 80 plus gold rated SFX PSU, which even with both the CPU and GPU slightly overclocked, is still more than enough power for my setup. I did need an adapter to fit the SFX PSU and the standard ATX PSU slot, but the smaller component size and shorter cables makes me highly recommend recommend the solution for anyone wanting to build in this case. In terms of case fans, I've got a 120mm pressure optimized Noctua fan in the bottom as intake and I've got a slim 120mm Silverstone fan in the top on my custom fan grill as an exhaust. These fans seem to work very well at dissipating the heat created by my system, whereas before the case would have had to either passively exhaust heat or have it actively pulled through the PSU, which I wasn't super happy about. Though I will be doing a more extensive benchmark video in the future of this PSU 
PC, I thought I'd throw a few benchmarks at you guys just so you get a general idea of performance with the system's current configuration and clock speeds. For gaming benchmarks, I tested out three games I play a lot, which are Fortnite Battle Royale, Overwatch, and Rocket League. In Fortnite, at 1440p epic settings, my system received an average of 64 FPS and 1% lows of 50. This is an enjoyable experience, but I definitely will be dropping the settings a little bit in the future so I can get much higher frame rates. For Overwatch, at 1440p epic settings, the system averaged 102 FPS with 1% lows of 87. And finally, in Rocket League, at 1440p max setting, the system pumped out an average of 127 FPS with with 1% lows of 110. Overall, I'm very happy with the performance of the system and can't wait to push it even further with some more extreme overclocks. Gaming, editing, and even just general productivity work is a dream on this machine. Boot up times, file transfers, program loading times, and high res editing all benefit from the Samsung 960 Pro used in this system, which though expensive, provides reliable, blazing fast performance. So there you have it guys, my dream gaming and editing PC is complete and I don't think I'll be making any upgrades anytime soon. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. Again, I want to thank Samsung for sponsoring this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up as well as consider subscribing for more PC and tech related content in the future. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.